If you watch this channel, you should know that every now and then, I'm gonna slide a little auction review in there. And if you really, really pay attention, you know that the Phillips Auction House is my favorite auction house and their new now auction is truly the best. So of course, I put September 28th, 2021, 10 a.m. CDT on my calendar. I got my tea and I got ready for the new now auction to start. Today, we're getting into seven lots that I knew I wanted to watch before the auction even started and the results of those lots. What's going on y'all? I'm Mariah Elise. I almost said I was happy to see you guys again, which I am. Then I realized I don't even see you guys. And it's honestly kind of weird that I have no idea who I'm talking to. But anyway, welcome back and welcome to those of you that are new now here. Y'all like that wordplay? We dig into the art world here from so many different spectrums. That could be the art market, tips to artists, tips to collectors, are what we're doing today. One of my favorite things to do, and that's reviewing my favorite lots from an auction. Listen, this new now auction is it for me. I text, called, and DM'd all of my collector friends, the ones that I know have a lot of integrity, the ones that I know are looking for pieces, that wanna buy pieces that they're gonna hold on to, they're gonna cherish them, they're gonna love those pieces, but they wanna go the route of the auction. I text them, I call them, I DM them to make certain they were watched. Also, I had small chats with some of the artists before the auction started and waited until the auctioneer prepared the first lot. But the first one, the first lot is not the one that grabbed my attention. I got going at lot number 11. You guys should absolutely know, you should know that I adore Alex Gardner's work. So of course I was watching. The first lot that I paid attention to Lot number 11, Alice Gardner's hanger had a low estimate of 10,000 and a high estimate of 15,000. And honestly, I had no idea what to expect, but I did have an inkling that it would at least two times the estimate. This is the 10th time his work showed up in auction with nine of those works happening this year and one in 2020. If I'm not mistaken, he's had a 100% sell through rate, I think. Disclaimer, I have no idea how these artists actually feel about their work being in auction. But I do know that the auction world and the auction market teaches me about a lot of new artists. And I use many areas of the art ecosystem to learn about different artists. That was my little disclaimer. The next lot came super quick after lot number 11 and that is a lot number 13. It's called Untitled by Shana McCoy. I pay attention to a lot of artists. So just like Alex Gardner, I follow Shana McCoy on Instagram. Because I'm following her career and I consider myself a fan of her work, I would easily describe myself as an admirer of her work. I advise all of you guys to keep an eye on her work. The work is beautiful, the stories are relatively close in the most healing ways, it's beautifully textured, and it reminds me of the most priceless moments you can have with the people that you love. This is her first piece to go to auction. It had an estimate between 3,000 and 5,000, and I like the unpredictableness of how it's gonna perform. It allows me to be on the edge of my seat. Whoever bought this piece definitely bought it for much lower than $3,000. Now that's just me assuming. Shana has been getting a lot of traction lately and this is what happens to artists and we've talked about it. We actually just talked about it. And you guys already know how I feel about things like buying a piece for an artist for a little, little amount and bringing it to auction as the artist most time gets absolutely nothing. But on the flip side, she's in the new now auction. She's being introduced to a completely new audience and Phillips wrote an article about her, about an artist to really, really pay attention to. If you're an artist watching and you're afraid of your work going to auction, just make sure that you have people on your team to protect your career and cement your career so this is the smallest of your concern. If you're wondering who I think you should bring onto your team, watch the video above me. Now, I really want you guys to pause the video really quickly and answer two questions. Number one, how much do you think this piece is gonna hammer for? Remember, the estimate is between three and $5,000. This is her first time showing up in auction. And number two, do you think flippers are horrible to the art market or do you think they're needed to give a specific balance to the art ecosystem? So now that you're back, the piece sold for $19,000. Shayna, I hope you're encouraged. Your work is absolutely beautiful. I'm sending you so much love and so much light. I love your work. We love your work. 
and let's keep going. So before we keep going, if you are enjoying this channel, click that thumbs up and subscribe to me. You know, if you vibe with me, I'm going to keep on rocking here. We're almost at 2000 subscribers. I can't believe I convinced almost 2000 of you guys to listen to me, but it's all love. I appreciate you guys the most. If you're interested in the artists that I directly work with, head over to my website at eliceartgroup.com and there you're able to inquire about available works. Also, before we get any deeper, if you're an artist, art collector, I want y'all to use what I use to stay organized. And I use Artwork Archive. I used to use a few other things, but I just recently switched over to Artwork Archive and I use it in real life. If you go to my website and you click on available works on the artist page, it's going to bring you to Artwork Archive. It's a game changer for me and it's been increasing our sales tenfold. Simply, it's an inventory manager that allows you to track, of course, your inventory, your sales, what you buy, all of your contacts, and so much more. I genuinely live by it. And because I love it so much, I struck a deal with them that allows all my followers to get 20% off of their first year, literally because I love it so much. But before you fully, fully commit, you guys can give it a try for 30 days. The link is in my bio. You. The link is in my bio. Guys, the link is in my bio. If you've painted at least one piece, if you've collected one piece, just start now before your collection and your inventory gets out of control. What is next? Lot number 14, truly the one I came to watch, like truly the one I came to watch. I posted it on my Instagram story before the auction even started. And it, just to let you guys know that that's the one that I was coming to watch. David White seems to be such a beautiful human who seems to just carry a light with him everywhere he goes. I spoke with David very shortly on Instagram before the auction got started. This piece is the one that I was waiting on. It was the one that I came to watch. And just as Philip specifically wrote about Shayna, they also wrote about David as an artist to keep your eyes on. Now this piece, Moonlit Rose and Heartache, was estimated between thirty dollars and $40,000, but so many people were interested in the work that we skipped over $40,000. The whole $40,000 got skipped over, and we jumped right to seven five six eight, bidding at $45,000. Within a minute, we made a major jump to a floor bid at $70,000. Within a minute, we were to a major jump of $75,000. Within the next minute, we were already at $90,000. All I could honestly say was, wow, I expected it to do a lot but I don't know I expected it to go all the way up to $90,000. This is the first time his work has showed up in auction as well, and I can only hope and wish that there is a great balance on the other side of this market. This man deserves to be treated fairly with honesty and integrity, just like Shayna McCoy. The work is vibrational and honest and personally emotional, and I love it. I hope that it went home with an integral collector. Now, although there were so many lots to mention in between, we just can't fit them all in a 15 minute episode. So we're skipping all the way to lot number 31, Marcelina at Peugeot Tour. I hope I'm saying it right. I wasn't even gonna pay attention to this lot, to be honest, but a collector buddy of mine told me right before the auction to watch out and I'm glad I did. I did not expect this one at all, but I guess, I guess in the Phillips new now auction, I should have. For here and now, number two, there was an estimate between $6,000 and $8,000, and it sold for $38,000. I'm gonna say it again. Six and eight, sold for 38. Just like Mr. Star City, it skipped the high estimate of $8,000 and paddle 7366 opened at $12,000. And just when we thought it was stopped, it literally kept going to $20,000 and $26,000 and $28,000 and then $30,000 and it ended at $38,000. Gosh, I would love to know how Marcelina actually feels about this. Also, artists and collectors, I would love to start to get your perspective. I would love to start inviting you on to the show and actually talk to you guys how you feel about the things that we're talking about here. If you're interested, let me know. I have some really cool stuff coming up in 2022, so keep on the lookout for that. And I'll say it again, stay encouraged if your work shows up in auction. Flippers exist, but we can only hope that the person that collects after it's flipped has integrity and holds your work to integrity as well as your name. Now, sometimes I think it could also be a little bit of a strategy to get an artist's work in auction because it's not always like, it's not always like the worst thing in the world. Now let's go ahead and jump into lot number 33. We know who's hot as Kapar is, and if you don't, spend some time looking at his work. 
This work was estimated between fifty and seventy thousand dollars, and it sold for drum roll, please. $80,000. If you ever get the chance to see his work in person, I have, that's a story for a different day, but sit with it. It's beautiful and it's meant to be revisited over and over and over again. Now, lots 34 through 46 reminds me of the most beautiful parts of auctions. For each lot, the seller pledged that they will be donating a portion of the proceeds from the work that sold to benefit Project Blackboard. Now, Project Blackboard is a 501c3 organization that seeks to strengthen community and encourage multi-generational play and inspire people to think more critically and creatively. The organization is gonna use the proceeds from the sales to develop a public basketball court in Haiti. And they intend to donate a portion of the proceeds from the sale of these lots to earthquake relief in Haiti. Some of my favorite artists are in this group of lots, like Deborah Roberts. Oh my God, I've had a chance to see and visit a notable collector in his home a few times. And quite honestly, that's where I've seen so much of the work that I've seen. Um, Deborah Roberts was one of them, absolutely amazing. But new to me was lot number 34, Milo Matthew, whose work had an estimate between fifteen dollars and $20,000. And oh my God, I'm watching it and I'm watching it and I'm watching it and it just kept going. It just kept going until it reached from $20,000 to $140,000. And in my head, I'm like, oh my God, it's a beautiful piece of work, but oh my God, like, man, like, is this happening? Is, is, is it because we're donating to Project Blackboard? Maybe, it, it's a beautiful piece of work, so I'm not gonna accredit it to just that. But it was extravagant, and I honestly, I couldn't believe my eyes. What a good way to start off the portion of the auction that's gonna benefit such a beautiful organization. The last and the final lot we're looking at today is lot number 46, Journeying Into Motherhood by Delphine Dasani. The estimate was between 18,000 and 25,000. The first bid started below the low estimate at $13,000. And bid after bid, it climbed its little way on up to the top from $19,000 to $30,000, from $30,000 to $40,000, from $40,000 to $50,000, and then it sold for $80,000. And you should know that this is also her first time in auction, and that's why it's called the Phillips New Now Auction. New Now, my favorite auction from Phillips. You just can't, you know, you just can't keep up with all the artists in the world. No matter how much arts you look at, how much Instagram you look at, how much art news you read, it doesn't matter. Guys, you have to pay attention to so many different parts of this art ecosystem to gain a perspective of what's really happening. And one part that we just can't ignore is the art. Guys, thank y'all for watching today. It was so many lots that I wanted to go over that I really just didn't have a chance to mention. This video is already like 15 minutes way past what I typically do. So y'all head over to phillips.com and look at the rest of the lots or make it easy on yourself and download the app. Guys, subscribe with me. If you vibe with me, y'all be safe in those streets. This is, to keep it real, this is the second time I recorded this video. So yeah, I'm out. <laughs> Peace.